Hello, um, thank you so much for joining us today for our tech talk. Um, we are going to be talking about library resources for small businesses. Um, Nick Abramson is a research librarian who works at Central and talks a lot about library resources and databases. Um, and we are excited to have him. So I will hand it over to you, Nick. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, so I'm going to try to go through uh, many of our uh, resources for businesses, uh, whether it's a small business or entrepreneurs or investors. Um, this presentation and all the resources that I'm going over, it's not exactly going to be comprehensive. We're not going to cover every single um, tool that we have available to our customers for business research just because that would take probably half a day. Um, and uh, additionally, some of the resources that we're going to look at today are pretty granular um, and very refinable. Um, and with that means that the features are um, a little bit complex. So if you have any questions, uh, it's something I'm not covering, we, we can certainly look at it in more in depth, but um, I will say that some of these resources, when we have vendors come in and do training, sometimes those trainings are you know, a full day or it's half a day. So um, to cover everything we're gonna cover in an hour, it, it might feel a little bit fast, but if you have any questions, just feel free to pop in the chat and let Kayla know. And then um, she'll post the questions to me, and then we'll, we'll um, address address the questions as they come up. So, I kind of identified three different areas that our business resources are um, the best at supporting. Um, three different kind of interest areas or, or, or steps in your journey to opening or, or imagining a business concept. Um, first, we're going to look at resources that will support. Um, new businesses, uh, along with that, that's business, pl business plan creation, identifying markets, market analysis, things like that, um, customer rate bases. And then we're going to look at resources that support existing businesses. So that's, you know, looks at expanding your customer base, discovering new supply chains, further market analysis. And then lastly, we're going to look at a couple different resources that um, are, that enable investment and investors to do quality research for investment purposes. Um, and again, kind of as a disclaimer or caveat, these resources are not atomistic or prescriptive. And when I say that, um, I mean, I'm, what I mean to say is, if we're looking at Reference USA, for an example, that doesn't mean that you can't use that for a new business or for investment purposes. So it's not exactly prescriptive based on the, the categories I have. But those are just kind of the better, uh, most suitable and germane purposes that they have, that they fill. So for, yeah, first we're going to look at resources for entrepreneurs and business plans. I'm going to toggle between this uh, slide deck and then we can actually look at the actual um, re, uh, database that I have open in my web browser. So first we're going to look at Small Business Reference Center. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, first we're going to look at the functions of a business plan and why uh, new business and uh, new business people and entrepreneurs should take a business plan seriously uh, and do their due diligence with creating one. So um, business plans are great because not only do you use it as kind of a, a persuasive argument so when you go to your lending institution or the SBA, the Small Business Administration, for a small business loan. Um, to secure funding or for investment purposes, but you're also using a business plan for a roadmap for success. Uh, when I say that, what I mean is there are different scenarios that you're going to kind of conceive of in your business plan, and you're going to address those scenarios as if they were, you know, to come to pass. So you're going to look at break-even analyses, um, you know, what, what to do in case of a recession, uh, expansion and growth opportunities, things like that. So those are all going to be part of your business plan even before you open your, your doors. Um, and that, and um, those are going to, that's going to best position your business for success. And here's some, a little bit of research on um, what I mean when I say, you know, how a business plan supports not only securing funding, but for the, um, for the fiscal health and, and success of your business. Um, up, up above, you see that um, there's a study that says that there's a, you know, 152% of business ideas are, are they're more likely to start their business when they have a, a business plan created. 
Um, not only that, but those entrepreneurs or the plan are 129% are more likely to push forward with their business beyond the initial startup phase. Business plans also support growth. Um, a business plan with comprehensive, uh, for example, data-driven business plans, uh, those businesses grow 30% faster than their counterparts. And then lastly, of businesses that survived five plus years, 70% have followed their business plan. So not only you know, have they, have they, were they successful in presenting their business plan to uh, financial backers or investors or the SBA, but they created a roadmap or um, kind of a checklist on scenarios and, and, and how to follow the business plan for success long after opening their doors. Here we have the small business plan. I'm just kind of going to go through some of the main or um, notable features. First, uh, we're going to look at the Small Business Reference Center in terms of making a business plan. So over here on this module, you want to go to Startup Kit and Business Plans. And then when you do, you'll see a screen that looks like this over here. What's great about this uh, resource is that some of these uh, forms, they come preloaded pre uh, pre with formulae in the Excel uh, and as an Excel document, so you won't have to create the formulas within that Excel document. Those are already preloaded. Um, I, I, I identify the preloaded plans right here, uh, or I'm sorry, preloaded forms right here, and you'll fill out those forms, and then those forms will go into your business plan when you when you take them to a financial institution or investor or small business administration. Some of the advantages of the Small Business Reference Center are, again, they provide worksheets and templates to create unique documents, projects, or proposals. Uh, the, the modules are pretty easy to find, um, and they address a variety of topics. And then they also provide media for users with the divergent learning styles. If, if you're a user that you learn better um, you know, watching a video or using or, or listening to audio clips, there are um, there are document or not doc. There are um, example. There are examples that support those learning styles. So you don't have to just have text and solely texts to read through um, some of these documents and, and tools. And I'm just going to take a quick look at that real quick so you can see how it looks like. What it looks like. Um, oh, it looks like I got signed out. This is under the database page. I'm kind of going through this a little quickly, but if you go to our home page and then re research, scroll down to see the stack of books and then databases, you'll see an alphabetical list up here. Uh, and then we're going to go to S for small business. What we got? There we go, small business reference center. Again, so we're going to look at the startup kits and business plans. Um, you're going to go. The writing a business plan are going to kind of just walk you through all of this. This is a great resource, especially for people and uh, that have never opened a business or that are new to entrepreneurship. Um, if they don't have a whole lot of experience, this 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 resource is great for just going through it. And then at the end, you'll have a comprehensive business plan that you can take to a financial institution or for a loan or an investors. And then you can also look at sample business plans uh, for manufacturing. There's there's a couple selected industry specific plans, and you can look through there to kind of get an idea of um, successful business plans that you know that that real people um, took to a, a, a bank, uh, they took to an investors, and they were able to secure funding for their for their business. Uh, let's go back to the PowerPoint and we'll go back to the beginning. All right, next we're going to look at, if there aren't any questions, we're going to look at um, the ideal user base for the Small Business Reference Center. I kind of touched on this, but this, is, this, this resource is best for any user looking for a vast array of information and toolkits for private sector business use. And, but it's particularly ideal for the first time entrepreneur or users requiring guided business plan development. This is really great for 
someone with not a whole lot of experience, if they've never put together a business plan before, if they're in the nascent stages of opening up their first business, um, we, if they're, you know, in the library and I was speaking with them, I might, this might be the first resource or database that I point them to, um, to, you know, help them along. Next, we're going to look at the Gale Small Business Builder. Um, this is a little bit more granular, a little bit um, more in depth. Um, the, the, the modules and the features, um, they, they cater or they're more specialized for people, for persons with already experience in the business world. Maybe they, maybe they're expanding an existing business. Maybe they're opening, you know, they're pivoting in their, in their career and they, you know, they've had a lot of experience in one area or one sector and, but they're interested in, you know, maybe, um, sporting equipment or something. So someone that, that has experience is savvy with business concepts, um, but just need kind of help putting the organization with the organization and putting it all together. This is what it's going to look like over here on the dashboard. Um, it, it's before you see this, you'll have to create an account. Um, it's really easy. It's like creating an account on any number of platforms you might encounter in, in your everyday work life or creating an email. Um, you're, you'll create a username and password and it'll, it'll prompt you for your library card number and, and that's about it and then, then you're in. So here we have, I've created an account or, or looking at my dashboard. Um, and then over here again, where I'm identifying an ideal user base. Um, we want, this is best uh, suited for entrepreneurs who've already begun brainstorming the logistics of their business. They're not, um, this isn't something to go to if you just kind of on, on day one of, of creating a you know business concept or a business idea. This is something a little bit um, for down the road when you when you kind of have a better idea and, and some of the details and, and numbers already kind of worked out. Again, it's going to be better for persons with already savvy with accounting and management principles. When you go into these different modules over here, um, it's it, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's jargon heavy, but it's going to use terminology that, um, that if you're, a, you know, if you're new to the business world, that it might, it might sound like a foreign language, but um, if you, if you're either entrenched or have experienced in, in business concepts or, um, or you've worked in uh, some sort of re retail or um, commercial setting, then, then these are probably um, terms and, and ideas that you're already familiar with. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's optimal for users who have experience putting together business plans and proposals, but they may need help with organization, putting it all together. There are some disadvantages of the Gale Small Business Builder. So as I touched on earlier, it's not necessarily optimal for users with uh, limited digital fluency skills. If we're, looking, if we're working with a user that's not all that comfortable with kind of a, um, you know, a lot of features on a web, a web page, not really know, not really comfortable navigating through it. Um, this might not be the best source for them, or at least um, there might be a bit of a learning curve for them. So in that regard, we might look at Small Business Reference Center first, and then um, pivot to this after we kind of work through the um, plans and stages on that. And again, as I mentioned, it's not necessarily ideal for users who are still in the exploratory phase of their business startup. Um, we want, this is um, catering to individuals that uh, have already started putting together some of the nuts and bolts of their business plan. And again, as I said, just need a little bit help putting it all together as in, in the final finished um, elegant looking document. All right, so i um, going to move along to uh, resources that are best suitable for existing businesses and um, growing those businesses via market analysis, uh, identifying new customer bases, um, and then other, other um, areas of, of an existing business that would, would facilitate and support growth. First, we're going to look at Reference USA. Reference USA is a, it's a very um, robust resource that we use. Um, it's, very, it's, it's pretty intuitive, though. We use in the research center, we used Reference USA just about every day uh, for a multitude of different purposes. Um, but for the purposes today that we're going to look at, we're going to look at 
uh, U.S. businesses and U.S. consumers and lifestyles. And then um, I, mean, we can, I can show you kind of how to drill down into it to create customizable lists and uh, other tools that you can use to for your business purposes. So here I'm going to identify some of the utility and functions of Reference USA. As I mentioned, it's it's very robust, so it's very versatile. Um, I, we all find it very easy to use. It has a familiar interface, has the uh, facets and um, filters on the left, on the advanced search screen, and in a minute I'll show you what that means. Um, it's easily customizable, and then it, there is remote access. You can um, access it from your home or office. You don't need to be in a library, and then you can download the data into a, a variety of different file formats as well. That's the business side, the U.S. consumers and lifestyle. So this is uh, this is really easy to use market research tools. You can look at um, you can look at potential new customers, consumer spending uh, habits. You can look at um, individuals and addresses identified as fitting kind of niche different niche markets uh, for different kinds of businesses. Um, this is really useful for target marketing. If, if you're a, in a small business or a corporation that um, either contracts or creates mailers um, in-house, this is great to identify the addresses and the homes or other businesses where you can directly market your advertising and promotion. And again, and, and it allows for data visualization. So if you want to create heat maps um, or any sort of kind of graphic that better visualizes the data that you're looking at, if you look for an example of that is if you're um, again wanting to open a sporting goods store um, you can create a heat graph of existing sporting goods stores a heat graph of um, potential customer bases that are interested in that you know that have been identified as um, having interest in purchasing sporting goods or in that sort of market so again that's going to look it's going to look really nice when you um, kind of put together those graphs and heat maps and you take those to in a potential investor or financial um, backing institution. And then again, kind of just going through the utility of different features on Reference USA. For the US businesses, it's best for company and industry research. You can, you can uh, research different companies and then along that same token, you can uh, research your, maybe your competitors, see, um, look at competitor reports uh, to try to get a leg up on the market. And then again, the consumers and lifestyles um, allow for easy identification of potential customers via spending habits, and it's useful for direct advertising. So this is kind of, um, this is a case study I put together, um, and this is kind of based on a real world scenario when we help, when I helped a, uh, uh, a bit, small business in town that um, it specialized in fabricating and installing retrofitted energy efficient windows to be fitted in older homes. And um, in this case study, we're looking to identify potential customers for direct marketing purposes. So over here, I kind of go through the steps. We go, th we go into the advanced search of US consumers and lifestyles. Um, I identify some zip codes up here that I already know that um, these zip codes have homes in them that are you know built in the 20s and 30s, um, but if you don't know those zip codes, there is down here the, a year home built option. I didn't uh, fit that on my screen, but I, I think I selected 1910 through 1940 or so. Um, so there's, this would require a little bit of independent research to identify these zip codes. Sometimes we use the Tulsa County Assessor's website or um, neighborhood home, home, homeowners association websites um, just to kind of get like a, the best bang for your buck. So there's gonna be like a large concentration of older homes in these zip codes. And then we looked at um, estimated home income. If we're, if we're marketing um, retrofitted windows, you know, if, if the typical cost of installation and um, labor is maybe two grand and up, then we wanna maybe market our, this, our services to um, home incomes that that are kind of on the higher side of, of middle class or, or um, upper class, well, or, or middle class, or upper middle class, sorry. And then over here, this is the lifestyle section. So down here, 
this, these different categories, um, they identify individuals, residents in, to in these zip codes that have displayed to their spending habits that they um, are interested in all these different sorts of um, pursuits. So I'm, I'm looking at home improvement, decor, do-it-yourself, home decorating and furnishing. That's going to, we, we feel that that's gonna best encapsulate um, potential customers that may be interested in um, updating their, you know, the, their windows uh, for more energy efficiency. And then we, we're also gonna look at homeowners so we can get names and addresses and then the year home built. As I said, that's, that's down here. I wasn't fitting on the screen, but I selected homes built between, I believe, 1920 and 1940. And this is the result. I blurred it out for privacy reasons, but each one of these entries is a name and an address that, um, that fits the categories that we, you know, the, the very targeted search that we created. So I, I can't remember how many pages, I think there was 15 or 20 um, of, of about 20 results each. So in that, using the, these lists, we can, the, the company can create mailers for targeted marketing pur purposes, um, hopefully to reach out to new customers and um, establish new customer bases. Okay, next we can look at business source premier. Um, this is an EBSCO product. That's the, that's the platform um, that hosts this website. It's a, you see EBSCO host over here. I mentioned that because um, for people Experience with research, this, this might look pretty familiar to them, this, this interface. Um, but so there are many advantages and some disadvantages of, the, of using Business Source Premier. Uh, this, is a, this is a source for um, finding uh, literature um, information. If, you, if, you, if you're looking for uh, an article in a you know, Harvard Business Review, Forbes, Kiplinger's, maybe, maybe Morningstar Investment Survey, um, very kind of business focused and business centric uh, pamphlets and, and uh, newsletters and things like that. This is this is your literature um, resource to use to, to discover that sort of um, that sort of writing and that sort of uh, research. So again, this is accessible remotely. You can access this from your home or office. You don't have to be in a in a library. You just need your library card number with you. Um, it's for for people familiar with with these sorts of EBSCO products, we we find that it's pretty easier to use, easy to use, um, and even if you're not familiar, it has a built-in thesaurus. So if you're putting in just kind of keywords and you're not really finding what you need, check the thesaurus because the, the, the thesaurus um, sources it's called an internal vocabulary. So the, the internal vocabulary, um, the subject words, the keyword terms, those are uh, keywords and phrases unique to this database that it, it recognizes rather than, you know, um, if you're just kind of um, kind of stabbing in the dark, putting in uh, different keywords. So um, use the, the, the thesaurus if you're not finding exactly what you need or, or, if, the, or if your results are, you know, 20,000 different articles, then, then you can narrow it down using uh, the thesaurus, pardon me. And this, this uh, resource aggregates a, a large collection of professional academic journals and magazines and other publication formats. If you want to go up here, you can go to publications and just browse, um, you know, A through Z. You can also, this is also great for uh, company profiles. Um, there's something called the Barnes Report that this, this, uh, these company profiles aggregate. So if you're looking at, you know, if you're, if you're in the media industry, or if you're um, whatever industry you're in, and if you if you're looking at kind of your competitors or the Fortune 500 companies within that industry, you can go up to those company profiles, and it'll give you a, a really great breakdown of their financials, their history, uh, stock performance, things like that. Um, this is not ideal for guiding business plans. It's not really that's not really suited for that. It's not really a function of the business source premier. Um, and again, much of the content here is aimed at users already established, experienced, or comfortable with business concepts. This is, you know, many of these, uh, many of these publications aggregated under this research, under this database, like I said, Harvard Business Review, 
um, maybe the, the Wharton School at Penn. Um, so it's gonna, you're gonna have um, really kind of specialized information, real, um, uh, oh, specialized and um, only pretty much germane to high business concepts for business growth and establishment formation. Um, but it might kind of seem a little bit academic for individuals that maybe have, don't have a whole lot of background in um, you know, business administration or, or some sort of um, academic program uh, that's business focused. And I'm gonna kind of show, I'm gonna toggle out of here and we can look at Business Source Premier if we haven't. There we go. Company profile. Again. Sorry about that. Let's look at the company profiles real quick. Just want to kind of show you what I meant by um, looking at some of the uh, Fortune 500 companies there. So here's 3M. If you go to the market line report over here. It does a SWOT analysis. It has a major products and services, key employees. And this is updated pretty frequently. So this is from January of 2020. Um, some of the key employees or, or uh, leadership may be a little different from then, but I believe these are updated quarterly. Um, so again, you can kind of get a, like a pretty comprehensive picture of these Fortune 500 companies that, um, you know, kind of, that, that may be in the industry that you're interested in. And you can kind of look at these reports in terms of, you know, discovering best practices um, and then their kind of um, strategic goals and, and things that they've put into play that have offered success for those individual businesses. So, yeah, if you have any questions or, or um, need assistance finding these company profiles, just reach out. Um, it's, it's pretty easy and we can, we can always forward these reports to you if, if you um, are away from a computer if you don't if you can't have access uh, our website we're happy to um, you know create a document and forward these and if, if they're too big we can put them in a Dropbox or some sort of cloud sharing uh, platform all right let's get back over here yeah all right we're gonna all right now we're gonna look at Plunkett's Plunkett's is great for industry analytics, job outlooks. Uh, it's a powerful business database for market research, industry trends, um, anal market analysis, statistics, and profiles of public and private companies, US and international. It's also great to, to look at corporate financial and executive statements. Uh, you can build mailing lists and you can choose from over 500 different in industries. And this is updated regularly as well. Um, <clears throat> this is really this is really useful if you're doing research on an industry, if you're doing research on manufacturing, if you're if you, if you want to see you know what the industrial outlook, what the industry outlook is for a particular sector. If you um, to use a past example, are going to open a sporting goods store. If you want to look at um, the data put here put here uh, via the Bureau of Labor Statistics and Economic Census data you can find the outlook and projections for the sporting good industry. And then you can also tailor that by geography if you wanna look at how it's doing in the Midwest or regionally, uh, that's a possibility as well. All right, now we're moving along to demographics now. Uh, this is a very powerful market research, consumer spending uh, re database um, it brings together census data, uh, survey data, market analytics, economic census data to, to provide these sort of these reports and, and comparisons and summaries of purchasing behavior, consumer expenditures, um, a, a lot of the individual components that go into identifying uh, market share, uh, market analyses, and identifying potential customer bases as well. Demographics now is a little bit difficult to use. When we had our um, Gale, it's a Gale product, we had a Gale rep come in and do training. It was a two-day in-service. Um, it's very 
granular, it's very robust. There's a lot of information here. And some of it can be a little bit overwhelming. Uh, although this is definitely, this is definitely a resource that can be accessed remotely, it can be accessed from your home or office, but it may be in your best interest to come into a library and work with a librarian when, when we're using demographics now. You can uh, book a librarian, we do book librarian appointments up in the research center uh, for 30 minutes or an hour, however long you know, we, we need to sit with you. Um, but for your first time looking at demographics now, I often recommend um, making a book librarian appointment so a librarian can sit down with you directly to look at this. Right, and then I've presented a case study here. Um, an entrepreneur is looking to expand her household furnishings business to help her determine where to open another store. She would like to better understand consumer spending habits by zip code. So there are diff the different reports have different titles. I'm looking at the consumer expenditure summary report and we're looking at 74104. So down over here, we, can, we have demographic highlights. Not only do we have um, current or, or very recent numbers, but then we also have projections. Further down the report, you can look at consumer expenditure top 10 categories, and then the average dollars per household. So these average dollars, they're not necessarily per, per individual, but rather per household in that zip code. So you can see down here, Household operations, or I'm sorry, household furnishings is a little over 1,500 uh, annually. Um, and then, you know, you can look at some of the other major major uh, costs and in investments that other that the households are making uh, annually. You can you can run this report by you know next to 74120, 74114, other zip codes. That way. This entrepreneur has kind of a holistic picture of the household furnishing consumer uh, expenditures in the Tulsa area or the you know, selected zip codes. This is just one example of a um, summary report. There are many different kinds um, that Demographics Now offers. They, offer, they also put together these groups called mosaics, which um, are kind of they're a little bit ill-defined, but mosaics are um, identifiable groups that are similar in um, either demographics or, or spending. Uh, I, I remember one group, mosaic group called the Sundowners group, which is, I believe, um, older older adults um, entering their their retirement years and and kind of identifying how those adults spend their money, where they live, um, you know, average average. Uh, average household income, things like that. And then, so you can use those mosaic reports if you, if you wanna target directly like a very kind of specific demographic group. And here I'm just, I just kind of put together some of, um, a comparison of the different resources that we looked at. Um, Reference USA, you can see uh, the utility of Reference USA. It allows and enables these sorts of, um, these sorts of, Aggregation data aggregation, um, business source premier, Plunk gets down here, and then demographics now. Um, if you're looking for expert insight, um, those those databases are going to be a little bit different than the ones that where you can create lists and where you can create, you know, targeted mar marketing opportunities. So if you're looking for biz expert insight, make sure that you consult business source premier and Plunkets. You're not going to find um, not necessarily editorializing, but you're not going to find a lot of analyses um, on the on the resources that are that are uh, that enable uh, building lists and and um, looking at you know very granular data without without context. Data without context um, it, it helps for you know building like I said building lists and and potential customer bases. But data without context really isn't insight nor is it information. So you want to look at business source premier and plunkets for that. And moving right along, finally we have resources for investors and investment purposes. Admittedly, I am not the most well well versed on investment concepts. Um, however, if you speak with other librarians, you know, we take pride in not, we, we might not know everything, but we can at least get you to the sources that can help you better than we can. So 
Um, these, these three different resources are all on our database page. Um, and we often use these with customers that they might know more than we do about what they're doing, what they're researching. If someone's researching the history of, of a stock, if they, uh, a lot of time, you know, we help a lot of customers that they might have been left a, an oil and gas or an energy stock in a trust or a will, and then that company might not exist anymore. So I'm gonna move along. That's um, a, great, a great idea, or a great um, use for corporate capital histories. Um, it's great for customers who own older stocks or bonds, and the original, original entity's name no longer exists. So you can kind of track corporate mergers and acquisitions. And then it's especially useful for oil and gas stocks and bonds and mineral rights that can usually only be tracked via corporate name changes. Some of those old energy companies were pretty small and they got gobbled up by you know, Phillips or, or Seneca. So it's, it's, it's useful to try to find those mergers and acquisitions. Um, there are a couple notable dis disadvantages of using corporate capital histories. Um, it's only accessible here at Central. Uh, in fact, I believe it's um, only accessible up on the third floor. So I, I, I did, I'm, on, I'm not on the third floor right now, so I can't provide a, um, an accessible, I can't look, we can't look at it right now, but up on the third floor, we use it often. If you want to come up there at Central, then we're happy to help you with it. And again, it's a little bit um, not as intuitive as some of the other platforms that we looked at, so it might require direct assistance with a librarian. If you want to do a book librarian appointment, we can certainly help you look at it, but um, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't kind of adhere to modern web standards. It's not gonna look like a lot of the websites you look at. It's not even gonna look at some of the EBSCO databases we looked at earlier. So the interface and the, and the look of it is a, is a little, maybe a little dated um, and probably not as intuitive as some other um, databases we've looked at today. Next, we're gonna look at value line. Uh, value line is a little bit easier to use and it's accessible via our um, via the catalog but it's only you can only use it here at, at central and at Hardesty. Um, it puts you in the driver's seat with accurate and insightful investment research on companies industries markets and economies um, it's updated all the time it's updated I believe weekly so you will have the latest most recent data and sophisticated tools um, and and expert analyses and guidance um, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great tool. A lot, of, a lot of seasoned investors that we work with, people that have been investing in a long, a long time or very familiar with stocks and bonds, they use Value Line all the time. We have, we have a, a pretty dedicated user base that, um, that swears by the Value Line uh, information. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, there's a screenshot here. Uh, sorry. There. So we, this is Alphabet, this is Google here. Uh, um, and actions, you can see where this price was. I believe I, I um, grabbed this a couple days ago. Uh, you can see the days change. Uh, there's projections over here. Um, and then you can see recent SBC filings. Further down, you see other graphs, of information, insider transactions. And then all these, uh, these different modules up here Will give you kind of more in-depth analyses. You can click on that and you can get a, a PDF report of all of this and a nice kind of PDF document where you can print out or you can email to yourself. So it's, it's not quite as image heavy um, and you wouldn't have to just screen grab it the way I did. Again, this is a, it's an exhaustive picture of corporation stock performance history as well as SEC filings, etc. Um, this is definitely, this is especially great for users proficient with investment and trading concepts, something that admittedly, like I said, I have um, kind of a, a dearth of knowledge in, but um, I'm always happy to learn more and, 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 um, and assist customers who, who usually know more about it than I do. Um, and then it's also great for users who understand an investment forecast for a given corporation. So this is great for um, not only investors, but investors where this information over here is meaningful because they can interpret this, this has meaning, and then they can uh, make informed decisions on um, stock purchasing behavior based on this. All right, and then lastly, we're gonna look at 
D and B, uh, that's done in Bradstreet Business Browser. Um, they're a very reputable company that's been around for a long time, um, providing quality business research to libraries and, and to corporations uh, uh, as well. Um, this brings together. This is kind of a kind of unique in that it brings together some of the similar information found on Reference USA or Hoover's, such as um, executive leadership. Uh, Branch headquarters locations, employee size, gross annual um, revenue, um, total you know gross gross annual sales. But then further down, you can see that it also offers investment um, projections, stock snapshots. I'm sorry, stock snapshots. Um, so a little bit more information than just kind of a, a company profile that you might find on Reference USA and Hoover's. So you get, you get the company profile, and then you also get um, some stock information, investment information down below. And that's it for me. Um, I, I know I went through that pretty quickly. We, we, we wrapped up a little bit early. Um, there aren't that many of us, so I was hoping that I could uh, answer questions um, and we can look at individual databases if, if there, we have any questions that can um, that address that those needs. Otherwise. Um, you can always come up to Central once we open. I'm up on the third floor, uh, and here's my uh, here is my contact information. If you want to email me or, or call me, email is probably better. I can check that remotely, um, and then you know if we need to set up an appointment where we can um, put together a market share report or, or any uh, any other number of, of things that we do up in the research center for your business, then we're happy to do that also.